Welcome to Electra Online. One of the major contributions to our understanding how to figure out the distances to objects in the universe, and in this case we're talking about the planets in our solar system, was Kepler. Now Kepler shouldn't be given all the credit because Kepler figured out how to do that by inheriting a notebook. A notebook from Tacho Brahe, who was a Danish astronomer who spent 20 years of his life very carefully, almost every night when the sky was clear enough, measuring the positions of all the planets in the solar system, trying to figure out how to try to figure out the secret to their orbits, the secret to how they moved around the solar system, and of course for us at that time that was the universe. And the mistake that Tacho Brahe always made was that he figured out that he that he assumed, not figured out, but he assumed that the planets orbit of the sun in circular orbits. That seemed to make sense, right? They seemed to have the circular pattern. And when he took his notes and it, he looked at uh, the numbers and he tried to correlate them to the assumption that they're going around in circular patterns, just the numbers didn't make any sense. Well, he ended up going to uh, Austria where uh, Kepler became one of his students. Um, and when Tacho Brahe died, Kepler inherited these notes. Kepler spent years and years and years studying these numbers, studying these notes, and finally he began to understand what they all were saying to him. And so that's where the three laws of Kepler came from. He said, first of all, that planets do not go around the sun in circular orbits, they go around the sun in elliptical orbits with the sun at the foci. So one of the ways to look at it was if the sun is right over here, shiny way, and the planets would have these kind of orbits like that, where sometimes they would come in close and sometimes it would be far away from the sun, like in elliptical orbits, with the sun at one of the foci of the ellipses. So that, was, that became Kepler's first law. The second law, he realized that when the planets were close to the sun, they moved faster, and when the planets were far away from the sun, they moved slower, in such a way that the area swept out per unit time was always equal, and that, of course, meant that they moved slower there and moved faster there. But the real key to understanding how far things were, especially the distance of the planets, was the third law of Kepler when he realized that the distance to each planet from the sun cubed equals the period of each planet squared, the period meaning the time it took to go around the sun once. And so here, for the six planets that were known, including the Earth, uh, they were able to measure, just simply by observing, that Mercury goes around, around the sun once every quarter of a year. For Venus, it's about once every six-tenths of a year. For the Earth, of course, it's one year. For Mars, it was almost two years. For Jupiter, it was almost 12 years. And for Saturn, almost 30 years. But they were able to measure those, those periods. And so, therefore, we can go back to the formula. If that was true, then all we had to do to find out the distance to the planets was equal to take, that was, you can calculate that by taking the cube root of the period squared. Now, in order to get the right numbers, the distance would have to be expressed in astronomical units. An astronomical unit is the distance from the sun to the Earth. So if this was the Earth, then this distance would be one astronomical unit. The period would have to be expressed in years. Now for the Earth that makes a lot of sense because if you put one here, one squared is one, the cube root of one is one, so yes, the distance would be one astronomical unit. But he figured out that works for all the other planets. For example, if you want to know the distance to, for example, Mars, we plug in this number right here. So we say that the distance to Mars is equal to the cube root of the period, which they measured to be 1.88 in years squared. And that would be the distance in astronomical units. So what we do then is we grab our calculator, 1.88. We square that number. And then we take the cube root of that. And let's see here, cube root, uh, 1 divided by 3 equals, and there it is, 1.5 astronomical units. So that meant they now knew that Mars was one and a half times as far away from the sun as the Earth. Now, at that time, they did not yet know exactly how far it was between the Earth and the sun. Matter of fact, the only knowledge they had at that time was to use the same methodology like they used back in the days of the Greek when, when Aristarchus realized, according to his calculations, that the sun was about four and a half, five million miles away. Of course, they didn't use miles, that, but I'm just translating in our units here, which of course is only about one twentieth of the true distance to the sun. They were beginning to think, modern astronomers back in the days of Kepler were beginning to think that that number may be off, but they were 
not able yet to come up with better methodologies to figure out the distance until about a decade or two later after Kepler came up with his third law. But nevertheless, they at least realized that relative to the distance between the Earth and the Sun, which is one astronomical unit, they then realized that Mars would be one and a half times as far away. If they did the same calculation for, let's say, Jupiter, figuring that Jupiter has a period of about 12 years, then they say, well, the distance to Jupiter is equal to the cube root of, let's say, 11.86 squared. And when they, well, of course, they didn't have calculators back then, but they were able to work these out. So they took 11.86 squared, and they took the cube root of that. So the cube root of that is equal to, and they came out with 5.2 astronomical units. So that made them realize that Jupiter was five times as far away from the Sun as the Earth and so forth. And so all they had to do then is find better ways of measuring the distance to the Sun and they would then know the distance to the planets. So at this point they just had a relative distance but a few decades later when they began to take more careful measurements and figure out the, the true distance to the Sun and within the same century as you if you saw some of the early videos how they figured out how to how to do that then actually had a fairly good idea of how far it was to the planets. Ingenious way all it took was, all it took was for, for Kepler to spend years and years and years studying those notes of Tycho Brahe and finally making sense out of them and realizing if the orbits of the planets are, are ellipses, then this third law of Kepler just fell out of that. And with a lot of hard work and a lot of studying, he realized that's the relationship and now we knew the distance to the planet. So slowly but surely, we were able to figure out how big the universe was. In that time, of course, the universe was basically the solar system with the stars in the distance. But as we developed better and better techniques, we began to realize, wow, this universe is enormous. And so we're going to learn in the next so many videos how we figured out the distances to the stars, to the galaxies, and on beyond that.